Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Well, I was going to talk about these other things, but then, uh, well, something happened. What had happened was Tim Harper actually posted on the Facebook uh, uh, RPG Brigade uh, Facebook page about um, this video that, uh, what the heck is it? Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. Robert, the narrator, um, had a video about our D&D Grognards, the grognardiest of them all. And then... Um, Runeslinger posted a great video response. Both both videos were great, really thought provoking. So I figured, well, why don't I answer this? Because, like, I'm one of those guys. You know, you look at my my games. I've talked about the games that I actually have on my shelf, and I am in fact a grognard. I'm I'm, uh, I'm gonna go with the the definition, the, the original definition in the hobby of what the grognard is, and that's something that likes um, old school D and D. TSR d d really, uh, what it boils down to, second edition and back. And for somebody like me, it's really far back. Like, you know, I, I played a lot of first edition, but basic. And the early basics, like BX. And to be really honest, what I really dig are, are like all the retro clones. Um, and I'm going to go off on a tangent here and tangent there, but why do I like the retro clones? Because I'm going to give you my perspective. Um, and I, I definitely, first of all, like I'll answer the question. Um, I, I agree with Runeslinger that the answer is no. It's just that we're more visible because we're really talking about people are being set in their ways and being resistant to change, resistant to trying something different or doing something different. Um, anyhow, you know, the original term, you know, like I said, was, was kind of like the older, um, you know, the older versions of D&D. And what, what I like about the, the retro clones that's come, up, come about since the, uh, the open game license is that like they cleaned it old D&D up. You know, so it's much more um, easy to understand. They got rid of a lot of the really wacky rules. Um, they've also put their own spin and feel onto the game because you know, the old version of D&D is not a cohesive system. It is not like, you know, um, Robert's talking about the idea of a you know, D20 and add a number, which is certainly a big part of it, but that definitely really came into its own in like D20 D&D. So, you know, third edition, Pathfinder, all that kind of stuff. Then it, then it became a cohesive system. Uh, and the old school one really isn't. I mean, certain parts of it definitely have that D20 uh, at a number, but there's other 2D, 2D6 mechanics. There's 1D6 mechanics. There's you know, D100 mechanics. Uh, we used to call those percentile dice back in the day. Uh, and then some of the retro clones have added, like, you know, D12 mechanics in there, too. So it's it's kind of a mix and match. It's it's a frame that you can hot rod in whatever way you want to, uh, which I'll get back to. Like, it's one of the reasons I like it. Um, but... Um, so yeah, resistance to change on my part comes from, um, to a certain extent, oh, look, somebody's commenting on another video. <laughs> so uh, it comes from a certain extent, the idea, well, I, you know, I've learned this already. You know, just like Robert was was alluding to in his video, you know, my time's not my own anymore. I am, I am older and I'm not a teenager. I don't have time to like learn a whole bunch of new systems. Uh, so, you know, I find something I understand, you know, I've understood this for a long time and so I can play it in my sleep. Also to me, you know, you know, I, I know part of this is nostalgia and just, you know, be, me being set in my ways. But, you know, I enjoy the way the uh, the stats, you know, a person's abilities are represented, you know, in, in that uh, old D&D. Because, you know, and, and all D&D, really, uh, that you've split up physical and mental into two parts. And then each one of those gets split into three parts. So that, that's the right, you know, to, for me, that's the level of granularity I like. I, I'm less of a fan of games where you have a physical stat and a mental stat. I'm like, oh, okay, that's a little bit not granular enough. But, you know, at the same time, there's games that have, you know, it's really granular. And I'm like, okay, dude, I just don't have time. <laughs> so it works for me. It's it's a car that I can jump into to get where I want to go. Now, in terms of things like setting and genre, you know, if you watched the, the, the kind of Hangouts chat that Tim and I had a while ago, you know, it's, it's true that it's taken me a while to, like, get away from the fantasy genre. I certainly like more swords and sorcery type stuff. But, uh, you know, not that I haven't played other games. But, you know, for me, one of the things is, like, as if I pick a new destination, the first thing I have to ask myself is, you know, this vehicle that I'm already comfortable with, can I get there in that vehicle? I understand that the D&D framework uh, can't get you everywhere. But, you know, my first thing, like, I look at something like, uh, what is it called? Uh, um, geez, I think it's called Mutants. No, um, Mutant Future is what it is. And I think Goblinoid Games puts puts that out. People have put out Labyrinth Lord. And so, you know, the, uh, the original um, Gamma World rules. We're not part of the open game license. It's at least if I'm getting my story correct. So they said, what the heck? We're going to use the BX rules and just make it that. And, and it works fine. Uh, there's a thing called Star Wars Galactic Adventures. I don't think it's ever been for sale. It's a free game. It's been around for a long time. I think it's like an eighth version. That's the BX rules. You just play Star Wars. You know, if you don't like that, don't do it. But, you know, it's available. So, you know, if I can get to the same place 
you know, or a different place using using the vehicle that I'm comfortable with. Okay, I'll do that. You know, I'm not saying I won't try it, but it's like how much effort do I really want to put into it if I can get use it, uh, play a different setting, different genre, and still use the the basic framework I'm comfortable with. The neat thing too, and I, I know I'm being an apologist for this, but I'm just like explaining my perspective, or maybe the perspective of a lot of grognards. If I can bolt on another mechanic to get this to do, you know, um, the little extra, if I if I could bolt on a sanity rule from somewhere, if I can even bolt on something like let's let's say a style point or or fate point, you know, or luck point rule from elsewhere to make it work the way I want it to. Um, sometimes, you know, if I already know the basic framework, you know, I can just put this little add on. Okay, now it's, now my car's got attack and it's got a blower. All right, it works, you know, and, and move on. Um, sometimes that's easier for a person like me than to just, you know, dump uh, everything and learn a whole new system. So that's, you know, I'm just giving you my perspective, not necessarily defending it, but that's that's where we come from sometime. Um, so let's see, what else was I going to talk about that was really cool and, and excellent? Well, yeah, okay, here we go. As far as learning new systems, I'm not against that. It's a matter of how much time do I have, how much time do I have to wrap my head around uh, the new system. But one of the things that's really important to me as I was thinking about this, and I've thought about this before, is... I like to think of um, gaming in terms of uh, destination being more important than the vehicle. In other words, like, where do I want to go? Um, if I want to play a different setting, if I want to play a different genre, if I want to have a, a certain feel in my game, like, what do I want the end result to be? And then, you know, what vehicle would be the best to get there? And so maybe I'll try my original vehicle. Maybe it works great. Maybe it, it, it turns out, because D&D, you know, th those rules can't do everything. Uh, so it, it may be that, okay, that's not the best system. So there's a different system that, you know, maybe is inherent in that game. You know, if you're buying a, buying a game that works better. Okay. However, you know, I don't want to try a new system. And I, I, know, I know people do this every once in a while or even write new systems. Uh, I'm thinking of a couple of videos people put out about, uh, you know, uh, designing games. Do you want a, a new system or a new set of mechanics simply for the sake of having a new system and a new set of mechanics? You know, it can be interesting, it can be intriguing, but is it going to get you where you want to go? And, you know, probably more importantly, or just as important, not more importantly, is, is it going to produce the results that you want, or is it going to produce nonsensical results at some point? Uh, I'll use like real broad brushes. I'm probably making the video too long, but anyhow, it's a lot of stuff to cover. Use really broad strokes to, to like um, put uh, mechanics into a couple different camps. There's the linear roll camp or type of mechanics, and that's something like D20 at a number, you know, D20 and mechanics um, that are inherent, you know, in one degree or not uh, another in, in D2, um, uh, D&D. Uh, they are, in fact, all of D20, Pathfinder, D&D, but, you know, something like, you know, old school D&D, they're, they're a big chunk of it. Okay, so they're, they're linear and pre predictable. Uh, something like, you know, D100, percentile mechanics, those are also linear and predictable. If you add a modifier, that modifier acts the same the entire way up the scale. So, not only that, I'm not saying they're better, I'm just saying this is what happens. Uh, the other thing that happens in, in those linear roles, and even these can even be D6 roles, is the uh, the chance of having a long shot or the chance of having uh, a, a supreme failure uh, are, are fairly consistent. You know, in other words, like, you know, you roll a 20, it's going to be a 5% chance of you rolling a 20. You're, it's 5% chance of you rolling a 1. If you use a, a some kind of dice pool, bell curve, you know, however the dice pool works, whether it's, whether it's D6 Star Wars type thing or, or um, you know, the um, Ubiquity games, all that sort of stuff. Those emulate more performing at your level of competence. Pretty much most of the time you're going to succeed in the dead center or you're gonna, you're, your role's going to be in dead center or like one or two places away from it. Those other ends, they drop off precipitously. The long shot is a very, very long shot. It's no longer 5%. It can be like 1%, half a percent. Uh, and also the supreme failure is that way. What do you want to go for? Do you want to emulate... Probably what's more realistic, the idea that the person's going to perform at their at their general level of competence most of the time, uh, and not have the the incredible successes or incredible failures, or do you want to have something where it's a little bit all over the place? Not going to not going to really emulate that performing at your level of competence as much, but the long shot is a lot more likely. So, you know that's that's one thing to consider. The other thing to consider, though, like I, like I alluded to, is the uh, nonsensical results, and I'm, I'm forgetting the game system off the top of my head, but there's some die pool game systems where you, you roll a certain number of successes. You want a certain number of successes and you get, you know, the more skilled you are, the more dice you get to roll. However, the more failures you get, the more likely you are to botch something. And some of these have the nonsensical uh, result of, well, the more skilled you are, the more dice you roll, the more chances you have to roll failures, the more likely it is you are to botch 
So a less skilled person will botch less likely than a really skilled person, which makes no sense. You know, not picking on the game, just saying there's some things that happen in, in any dice set, you know mechanic. So having a new system just or new new mechanic just to have one isn't necessarily a good thing. Not a bad thing, but it's not you know to me it's like okay, don't build your car or vehicle. Figure out where you want to go first, and then figure out well, do I want to take a unicycle there, a rocket ship? Do I want to take a car? You know, do I want to take a hot rod? You know. So, uh, you know, that's a tangent, but that, you know, that's one of those things like you know, as, as a person like me come, becomes resistant for a second, the first thing I want to look at is like, okay, does this really do what I want it to do? Is it going to get me where, you know, where I want to go? Or is it just new and novel just to be new and novel? You know, so uh, does that mean we're the grognardiest of all? Not necessarily. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. But that, that, you know, that for a person like me is one of those other things I have to take into account. Do I want to invest the time? Um, if I can get where I want to go to anyway, using the, the vehicle, I know how to, can I, can I, you know, cobble together something and go, um, and then does the system actually really work for me? You know, I'm more open to different genres and, uh, settings than new systems. And so, you know, I, I, am pretty rigorous with new systems because you know, I know, I know darn well that the old, you know, TSR basic BX, you know, limitations of flame princess, uh, Astonishing swordsmen, sorcerers, you know, thing. They're, they're cobbled together systems. They're not these, you know, complete, uh, complete systems, you know, that are all uh, unified. They're not. But they get me where I want to go uh, in many cases. You know, that said, I'm, I'm really digging ubiquity, you know. So, I don't know. Though, that's just from my perspective. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a whole bunch of things that I was going to talk about, but the hell with it. You know, you don't want this video to be too long anyway. So, you know, are we the are we the most resistant to change? I don't think so, because there's people that are definitely very anti D and D. There are people that are firmly in the fate camp. There are people that are firmly in the storytelling camp. You know, I think maybe people that play D and D are a little bit more visible. And you know, actually, you know, there's the grognardy like the TSR D and D, but I find the people and I'm not picking on them. I'm just saying the people that are in the the third edition camp are very resistant to change. The people that just play D and D, no matter what edition it is, they're you know the they can be pretty resistant to change as well, just as resistant as the people that play some of the more storytelling, storytelling games. Um, you know, humans are tribal. So, yeah, I guess that, that's my, my initial take on it. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to check out new things. You know, I think I'm being I'm thawing out a little bit. But that kind of is, is some of, you know, my perspective and, you know, where I'm coming from with this topic. So sorry it was long, but what are you going to do?